in Provo, Utah. And here we are. I'm so excited to be here. I flew in from Ohio, where well, I live on a farm. So uh, this is a big night out for me. <laughs> this is like Las Vegas. <laughs> this is like Disneyland. I get to talk to people and not animals. <laughs> and guess what else? It's my birthday. <laughs> I am 85 years old. <laughs> I figure if you're gonna lie, you need to lie up. Cause I don't wanna say I'm 40 and you say, oh, holy mackerel. What happened to that poor lady? She looks like she was hit by a car and left by the side of the road for dead. But if I say I'm 85, you'll say I want what she's got, right? As we get older, right ladies? Natural beauty takes time. <laughs> so I started doing my makeup on Monday. And I finished about an hour ago. <laughs> my sister says, don't worry about your lines on your face, Leslie. She said, we should embrace every line on our face. She says she has earned every line on her face. And I thought to myself, I think she got ripped off. Because <laughs> mine came for free. I, uh, since we're friends, and it's my birthday, I will admit I have had a little plastic surgery. My friends think I've had too much since I used to be a tall black man. <laughs> I wish I was making that up. <laughs> and this is my hair. I have naturally curly hair. I am blessed with this hair that no matter how miserable I go to bed at night, my hair wakes up happy. <laughs> Good morning, Leslie. And I, uh, I tried to look my best for you all this evening. Thank you. Thank you. And I always, when I get to all dressed up, I always say to my husband, I say, how do I look? And he says, you look fine. <laughs> Not what I want to hear, right, ladies? What I want to hear is fabulous, beautiful, thin. <laughs> is this too much to ask? Wouldn't it be great if your man was like, uh, you could put a little computer chip into his neck, and every time you touch it, he'd say all the things you always wanted to hear? You'd touch it and he'd say, That diamond is much too small. <laughs> You touch and he'd say, I have gas, I'm going into the next room. <laughs> you touch it and he'd say, I'm lost, let's ask for directions. <laughs> of course, my husband would think it would be better if he could put a computer chip into my neck. You would touch it and I'd say, nothing. <laughs> Because he, he thinks I talk too much. He actually, it was a little rude what he told me recently. He said my voice was irritating. <laughs> Sometimes he says to me, could you, could you stop talking? Would you hush up? Could you, could you stop? Could you just, could you hush up? Would you just shut up? And I just keep talking. <laughs> My husband, uh, he says my voice uh, doesn't come in handy all the time, but when we lived in Hollywood, I lived in Los Angeles, I auditioned for the original phone voice of the iPhone, Siri. <laughs> and they told me if I had gotten the part, they would have renamed her Sorry. <laughs> so now I, about, actually about um, 10 years ago, my husband said we were gonna move our family from Hollywood. And we were gonna live in his 100-year-old family farm. It was vacant for over 100 years and we were gonna raise our children in God's country. And I was thinking to myself, I'll have the adventure, I'm a comedian, right? I was thinking Gone with the Wind, Field of Dreams, you know, babe, a Disney's babe, people working in the field, mama cooking biscuits and gravy in the kitchen, come and get it. 
We rolled into his hundred-year-old family farm. There were animals on the roof, a couch on the front porch, weeds everywhere. It looked like an episode of Duck Dynasty. <laughs> and I started to cry and tears welled up in my face and my husband said, what is wrong? And I said, well, where are the people? He said, you are the people. He said, but you can do whatever you want to to this place. And I said, can we burn it? <laughs> my first birthday on the farm, absolutely true story, my husband gave me six chickens. <laughs> yes, he is a member of the bird family. Cheap, 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 cheap. <laughs> Sick, that, that you'll laugh at later on. Six chickens, and soon we had 286 chickens. He said, let's eat the chickens. I said, eat the neighbors? He said, let's eat the eggs. I said, eat the neighbors, children? I said, you go to the grocery store and get some of those homeless eggs, those I could eat. They have names, and it's very, any farmer people out there, anybody lived on a farm by applause? A couple people. How about flown over a farm? How about that one? <laughs> yes, one morning, absolutely true story, my husband woke me up and he said, let's go pull a calf. I said, you know I hate aerobics. Because <laughs> I didn't know what that meant. So as I, I got all dressed up every time I went any, anywhere on the farm. So I put on my $75 Reeboks on and my Under Armour outfit and I go walking out to our field thinking, I might meet somebody. Somebody might talk to me. And as I got closer to our prize cow, there was a prize cow and she was hunched over really ugly and there was a thing coming out the back part. You know, and the, and, and, and the, the cow was mooing really tragic. It was, uh, <laughs> uh. And my husband said, the cow will die if we don't help her. So I ran to the front of the cow and I went, <laughs> Did you have my baby? <laughs> he said, now when the cow goes down, I want you to sit on her head. Isn't that rude and insensitive? <laughs> Can you imagine the doctor telling your husband, go sit on her head? <laughs> of course, some of you might like it out there. How about that one? But he was great. He's fearless and he's a real man. He got in the back of that cow, true story, and he took those little bitty hoofs and he pulled and he pulled and he pulled. And it came out. And everything else came with it. I said, put that stuff back in. It looks important. <laughs> That's been like my, my life on the farm. And I, I waited a long time to find my husband. I had my career before I had my husband. And I had searched this whole world to find that one special man who could say those three special words, I have money. <laughs> and I knew he loved me because he asked me what my ring size was and I told him anything over two carats would be fine. <laughs> Funny when you live on a farm in the middle of the, of the tundra, you know, you, the, the three words change to I want heat. Because it's really, really cold out there. But I learned a lot about my husband. I remember in the beginning, how many of y'all are married out there by applause? We're the married people. We're the single people. Not quite as happy as those married people. But having a husband, it's just musical to say the word husband, isn't it? Say it with me, husband. Husband. You gotta get your lip going up to your nostril. Just saying the word. I, I remember the first year we were married, having a husband, I went to buy him a Valentine card. The girl said, do you want a sweetheart or a honey card? I said, I want a husband card. People ask me, where do you go at night? I say, I'm going to be with my husband. Visa called and said, I'm over my limit. I said, speak to my husband. <laughs> Men used to flirt with me. I'd say, I have a husband, which is better than what I used to say. I have a disease. <laughs> and is it just my husband or do all men have to save every t-shirt from the last 25 years? <laughs> he had on this gross black ripped up thing. I said, throw that on all 
it's the first time I changed my oil in my 77 Chevrolet. I mean, when do you throw a t-shirt out that says the Partridge Family World Tour? <laughs> just my husband. And, and is it just my husband, or do all men have to separate their laundry like this? <laughs> Clean. <laughs> Dirty. What do you do when they do this one? I'm thinking it's dirty. <laughs> he says it's good for one more wear. <laughs> and is it just my husband? I just asked him to, to, to make the bed. It's not that hard. It's a pillow sham. It's, it's a comforter. It's not hard to make a bed. Uh, now he's informed me, though, now, that he can make the bed while he is in the bed. <laughs> what he does is he lies really flat. He pulls the comforter over his head and then he kind of scooshes out the side. <laughs> and changing the sheets. Can your husband change the sheets? It's not that difficult. I went on a tour for two weeks. I came back. He put new sheets on top of the old sheets. <laughs> to get into bed, I had to use a stepladder. And he hates to wash the clothes, but he loves to wash the car. Is it just my husband? So you know what I do? I am very smart. I put all of his dirty underwear in the rag pile by the car. <laughs> He's scrubbing away at that car and that underwear is spotless. But it's uh, really hard to get the skid marks out of the car. <laughs> I must have crossed the line there. <laughs> and I am a mother. Anybody have kids out there? I am a mom. I'm an old mom. I, I had my children later in life. And is it selfish to say I prayed and prayed? I wanted a, a little girl. I just wanted a little girl because I would know what to teach her. Buy more clothes, you're a princess. <laughs> But you change when you have a son, right, ladies? You think if a girl did that to my son, I'd think, that manipulating girl. <laughs> what kind of a mother does she have? And of course, the doctor told me that my eggs were too old. They told me my eggs were scrambled, actually. <laughs> he told me that my eggs had little crow's feet and a little walker. And those little fishies, wait! <laughs> yes, he told me I couldn't have any children, but God had a different plan in mind. Thank you. And I am the mother of a beautiful, I had a little boy, I had a, well, it was, he was ten and a half pounds. <laughs> Instead of a birth certificate, they gave him a driver's license. People would ask me what did I crave, I said a surrogate mother. <laughs> My body felt like the little Volkswagen in the circus, you know, remember the circus where the clowns all just kept coming out? <laughs> That's a visual, coming out. <laughs> And we, we argued about naming uh, my sweet, precious first angel. We, uh, he, my, the husband wanted to name my son Moses. <laughs> Moses Joseph, so we could nickname him Mojo. <laughs> and then I thought I couldn't have another child, but God had an, another idea in mind. So we had our second one. And we called him Oops. <laughs> and then I got spayed. Because <laughs> I'm on the farm, right? I thought that boys would just, you know, boys are just so active. I just didn't know about boys. I didn't know that they just didn't sit still. You know, I had been a beauty queen, so I, I would walk normal. I would just walk like a girl. I would walk lovely, you know, walk lovely. And I'd take my two kids to the mall, and I'd walking, walking, and walking. Where are you? <laughs> They just are so, they were just so active. In fact, I put, I had to put a harness on the two boys. And the church, my church friend at church, uh, she said that um, she couldn't believe that I put a harness on my kids. And I said, well, I just want him to live. <laughs> I didn't know that the boys wouldn't just love each other automatically. 
I didn't know I had to hypnotize the big one into loving the little one. We love our brother. We do not hurt our brother. We do not put a pillow over our brother's head. And all he could say back to me is red rum, red rum, red rum. And then, uh, of course, they were so active, I put him in front of the TV and Barney was playing back then. Remember Barney and, you know, I always felt like a bad mother because Barney would say to the kids, do you want a piece of candy or an apple? And the kid would say, I want an apple. Not a normal human child. You know, they were gonna grow up being some repressed bank robber singing, I hate you, you hate me. I'm in a dysfunctional family with a great big smack and a kick from you to me. Now I'm seeking therapy. <laughs> nursery rhyme it went like this <clears throat> and the seat goes down 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 and we wipe the rim 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 cause late at night 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 mommy won't fall in 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 so thank you but I I decided you know my children were just so active and I had this career that I just loved and I was living in the middle of nowhere and, and I decided I was going to stay at home with my children because no one else would watch them. <laughs> they were just so hard and I, and I just said, I, God gave me these kids and I am going to do my best. I'm going to be, you stay at home moms are the heroes of the universe. <laughs> you are. I didn't know it was that tough. I thought it'd be easy. You know, what could it be? Just watch two kids at home. The first year I did okay. I, um, I was depressed a bit and I twitched a bit. I started to twitch just a bit. <laughs> but I made it through the first year. And then the second year I started to, you know, I started to twitch and I started to yell a bit. I was yelling at the toddler, get off the counter. And the toddler would get all scared and I ran into the bathroom because I thought, what if I were to die right then? That would be the last face that he would see of his mom. I didn't want to be that kind of a mother, so, so I tried to change. And I, on the second year, and I made it through, I did make it through the second year. And on the third year now, I wanted to pour myself a drink at five o'clock. But then Dr. Oz came on at two. So I thought if I poured it at two, I'd be a bad mother. But if I poured it at five, I just need a 12-step program. <laughs> But on the third year, I started to pray. I decided to go back to church, and I started to pray, and I said, Lord, could you help me? And on the third year, no answer. <laughs> and on the fourth year, now I'm praying some more. I'm going to church every Wednesday. I'm going Saturday. I'm going, there, there are prayer chains around every denomination in my, in my neighbor, in my town, and there was, Leslie needs some help. Those kids, those kids are wacky. She needs some help. <laughs> and no answer on the fourth year. And on the fifth year, I kept, I kept it up. And on the fifth year, you think that a miracle can't happen in your life. And a miracle happened. The school bus came to my house. <laughs> so terribly they're at the, they're at Ohio State they're in college they're at one is just graduated and I and I, I my son says mom it's not Ohio State it's the Ohio State it's the Ohio State I said quit quit bugging me or else I'm not gonna send you the rent <laughs> And then the big boy, you know, he, he got into veterinary medicine school. I was so proud of him. And then he called me up and he said that he, he didn't, he didn't want to go. He wanted to be, play his guitar in Nashville. And as I hunched over crying for the next year, I realized that my prayer changed from I wanted my son to be a doctor to a, now I want my son to marry a doctor. <laughs> 
And then my, my, my baby was doing the foot. He liked the football stuff. Do you like football out here in Utah? <laughs> because, you know, I'm in show business. What do I know about football? And in Ohio, you know, football is king. It's king. And my kid said to me he wanted to play football. And I didn't, I, but you, you, tried, you jump in there because you're a good mom, right? So I asked him because I wanted to help him. Where's your costume? When is the rehearsal? What part are you playing? He said, Mom, it's a uniform, it's a practice, and I'm a tight end. I said, well, wear clean underwear is all I gotta say. Because I didn't know about this football thing. So then I tried harder, and I called up the director. And I asked him, what must my kid do to be successful at this football thing? And he said he'll need a cup. I said, six, 12, or 18 ounces. Because I didn't know about this football thing. And then the director told me that my kid would need a mouth guard. You know what that is? That protects his teeth. I just put $4,000 worth of braces on my kid's head. And the mission of the other big lug is to knock it out of his head. I'm going to be buying him dentures while at the same time paying off his braces. I am driving a 1996 Ford Escort so my kid could have a beautiful smile. I am driving my kid's smile, and the director said he needs a mouth guard. I didn't enjoy this. And then he told me that this football thing is not inside. It's outside. And it's November and October, and it's snowing, and it's sleeting. And all those football moms, are in, they're in the bleachers. They're going, go D. They're so happy. Go D. Go D. And I'm thinking, could you get to the end of the alphabet? <laughs> I'm cold. About an hour passes. Everybody starts to leave. Intermission. <laughs> As I start to leave, I notice on the, on the performance space out there, I notice there's like dancing girls. And they have costumes on, and there's music. And I yell to the people leaving, come back, come back. You're going to miss the show. And I couldn't help myself. I just stood up on the bleachers, and I started to sing. A little louder, please. Don't let them see. Don't let them guess. His mom's in the bleachers. She's a mess. It's violent, this football thing. So I scream, let him live, let him live, but the coach says go. He's on defense real low, the football gets a snap. He runs around this kid to sack the quarterback. Another kid, 300 pounds, jumps on. the game please don't talk to anyone <laughs> thank you so much thank you. this is so great that you were able to watch the special and i'm just so thrilled to be here because of course my story is from hollywood to the farm and i'm a working comedian with two children in college and a husband that tries to be a farmer so you know money is very very tight and so if you could just tip as much as possible, because it's very hard to tell jokes in the middle of a cornfield to cows and pigs and possums. So tip as much as you can, and I would be so appreciative, and I'm so blessed that you were able to watch the special and give me a moment. <laughs>